Hey, welcome to Speaking of Health Law. Um, I'm Ali Dalton and I'm an attorney at Bradley. I focus primarily on healthcare transactions and all things related to making those happen. These episodes are brought to you by the Early Career Professionals Council or ECPC. And our goal is to showcase the breadth and variety of folks working in health law or health law adjacent spaces, and to also encourage folks who are starting off in their career so that they can know that there are so many different options to being involved in the healthcare law space. Our guest today is Masha Goodman Khan. She's the Director of Compliance and Legal Operations at Vericell. And I am particularly excited to showcase her story today because while Masha is a graduate of Seton Hall School of Law, instead of getting a JD, she received a Master's of Science in Jurisprudence. And she focused her studies in on pharmaceutical and medical devices, as well as hospital and health policy. I am going to save all of the great details of her story for her to share with for the folks listening today, um, she also has a certificate in healthcare compliance law, and she has worked at different places um, using all these skills. And so I'm very excited to have you on the podcast today, Masha. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. So, well, please, um, I would love for us to just talk a little bit about the path that you took to get to your current role today, um, both from the perspective as you were sharing a little bit earlier, you previewed for us how um, everything started from a temp job and now you are running things. So yeah. please. <laughs> oh, yeah. So no, thank you. Um, so I have my undergraduate degree in biological sciences, um, and I knew I always wanted to work in medicine and healthcare. That's pretty typical, I think. That's a pretty standard um, track for folks. Um, while I was figuring out what I wanted to do next after college, I I wasn't 100% sure, but understandably was working while I was trying to figure it out. Of and course. lo and behold, um, I get an email uh, from a temp agency and they said, listen, we just need somebody to cover for like four weeks. You know, somebody's <laughs> getting married, doing something, I don't know, but um, are you interested in this position? And I thought, well, you know, absolutely, right? You know, you're trying to figure it out. and Interestingly enough, the pharmaceutical industry was not ever an industry that was like in my periphery or even, you know, in the forefront of my mind. So when I got this temp offer, I thought, OK, like, you know, what's four or five weeks? No big deal. Um, and I walked in and very quickly, four or five weeks, they said, well, you know, are you willing to stay on for a few more weeks? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And fairly quickly, this temporary position became a full time employee um, position. And it was specifically in under the commercial umbrella in something called marketing operations, at least that's what it was called at that organization. So it had an administrative like function for sure. Okay. Um, but I noticed very quickly that this job was constantly um, working with a variety of different specialties. So you were never just working with other people in this marketing ops type function. It was across the gamut. And as much as I love the healthcare industry, and I knew that I had always liked that, and I always liked the idea of something that was patient centric, um, I never realized that there was this like industry and let alone this one place, right? That was just a small representation of a much bigger entity like the pharmaceutical industry or biotech industry. And I organically was drawn to just the process and structure of it all. And I realized that um, in having um, mentors in legal and in regulatory, um, they were, you know, like I had said, these smart, fascinating people who were teaching me the difference between, you know, regulations and laws, what is federal, what is state, what's an industry yeah. guidance, what's the best practice. And while folks who traditionally would have been in this marketing ops role, I think either, you know, stay in that function, which is very understandable. There's a very, you know, prestigious and, and um, fascinating career that you can have with this. That's very important. Or they move organically into marketing, market access, something of that nature. Um, that didn't really speak to me and where I was felt myself sort of headed was really more into the process and the structure that organically fell under legal compliance and some regulatory. And um, I started to sort of creep on and take some compliance and legal like responsibilities within the bounds of what was appropriate. Right, of um, course. And then realized like as I was progressing in my career, I just made the switch over to compliance and I absolutely, um, you know, I absolutely loved it. Um, I, and while I was, I was sort of in that compliance role, I realized then, you know what, I am not quite done. You know, again, you're always playing that game in your head and of course. <laughs> there's a lot of, right. There's a lot of, um, legal professionals who are not JDs. That's it's become yes. cre increasingly 
more common. You see chief compliance officers that um, certainly don't have JDs. Some of them maybe didn't get an advanced degree and that's fine, right? That doesn't make them any less qualified and, and, and brilliant and very capable of leading um, a great organization from a compliance perspective. Um, and so I thought that was really interesting and I had worked with compliance professionals. Some of them had advanced degrees in finance or they had an MPH, um, all of which, you know, was something that I was entertaining. And then it dawned on me, I, th I said, you know, I, I think I see the trajectory for myself and I would like, you know, to, to definitely stay in this role. Um, but I think I, I think I want to go to law school and I think I, I want to figure out what that looks like for me. Yeah. Um, and so that's sort of how that sort of transpired. I think that my favorite thing about my journey is one, it started kind of, you know, kind of on a fluke and a whim a little bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a four-week gig that turned <laughs> into a career. <laughs> a short-time gig, right? Um, but you get to meet, um, you know, you you get to meet the, the most interesting and brilliant um, uh, and dedicated individuals. And I just, you know, I that part I just genuinely really loved. And also that what's true, what was true then is true now, which is I do not only work with legal and compliance professionals. I'm, I'm one of a, of a pretty small legal and compliance team, and we are always with our colleagues in other functions. So all of that laundry list of functions that I had mentioned earlier, those are the people that I spend most of my time with. I'd love for you to share a little bit. That's like a great way to go into the next question I had for you, which is um, sharing with us what a day in your life looks like um, in your role, because like you were mentioning, you sort of you see the whole the whole scope from you know the legal side where you are dealing with lawyers day to day, but mm -hmm. also the business folks and R and D and external facing folks um, who might need your guidance. And I think that I I would hazard a guess that you are the best translator when you have a lawyer in the room and a business development person, <laughs> and you're sort of that bridge of like I am a normal person, I am not a lawyer, um, but I can I can understand what the lawyer is saying, and let me make it easier for you to understand. Every day varies quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on what's happening. So um, I think the the general rule, like the the um, I think the general rule in compliance is you know the three key phrases, right? Or the three key words, which is, you know, detection, prevention, correction, not necessarily yes. in that order, but that's the general idea. Yeah. So that's sort of the infrastructure of what you're working with. And then depending on, you know, the size of the company that you work for, is it newer? Is it, has it gone through a major evolution? Does it just have organic growing pains or is it big, right? Um, you're always trying to figure out what your counterparts and your colleagues are doing, because again, it's very much a support function, legal and compliance. Um, so the more I'm integrated in what my colleagues are doing, the earlier I get brought onto projects that the marketing team might have, or the medical team might have, um, the better off it is. So any, any one day can be filled with meetings like that, where they're going through, you know, a brainstorming, or this is something that has already been in the works for a number of years. But as we know very well, <laughs> laws change, regulations change. What was okay five years ago may not be as okay today, hypothetically, right? And so it is the opportunity to sort of speak with folks and figure out what is needed, what the goal is, and finding a way to always know that like it is our mutual job, right, to sort of keep the business moving. Mm -hmm. But I like to say, you know, playing the long game, right? If what we're doing today does not serve us as an organization many years from now, and there's an undue risk that, you know, we want to take into consideration, should we be doing it, right? And the answer, and, and that's not necessarily even where I am now. I think that's just true as a blanket statement. And right. so it's always trying to like strike the balance. I, um, somebody once teased me and said, they, they said, oh, you try and find like a really nice way of saying no. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> I promise it's not that. I mean, but that is like a powerful skill to have. So <laughs> I don't know that I'm good at it. I just, it's, I'm just trying. Um, but it's not, it's rather than, you know, it's, it's hearing out, you know, sort of what the plan is. It's making um, the things that folks don't understand, right. As it comes from like, you know, whether it's federal law, state, you know, applicable state laws, just internal policies, industry standards, palatable, um, and that can happen in a myriad of ways. So any given day, I might be doing something under our monitoring and auditing program, right? Which means that I'm attending a speaker program or there's an advisory board. And if, you know, and they'll say, oh, well, you know, what do you, you just heard X, like, what do you think about that? And I'll say, all right, well, let's talk about it. It's not, it's not as, um, mysterious and complex. Like, you know, everyone is such a, such a trained professional that even if you're not, if this isn't like your lens, your area of expertise, legal and compliance, um, 
I don't think I'm going to say anything to you that's going to sound like, you know, it's, it's coming out of left field. So mm-hmm. it could be monitoring and auditing. Um, it could be compliance training, right? And just internal trainings. We have new hires that, that join, um, just general rules of the road. You know, do, do people follow pharma code versus Advamed? You know, that's something that's that's pretty common. What do the what do the requirements say? Are we going to conferences and conventions? You know, there's things that, you know, that just sort of come up. Um, and so that that is something that, that happens pretty frequently. Um, I'm just frequently in meetings with a lot of um, my colleagues, again, in those varying um, departments or collaborating with some to help support another department. It could be regulatory and legal and compliance. It could be market access. It could be, you know, marketing, sales, anybody. Um, So I would love to know when you're making your decision about whether you were going to go back to school and, you know, obviously you chose to get your master's there. Like you mentioned MPH, there are different options that other folks um, decide to choose. Um, I'd be curious to know sort of when you made the decision to go to Seton Hall and and do their program, if you ever considered a JD or if you were thinking maybe some, something else that, that might have ended up with you being a health lawyer. Um, Mm -hmm. And if so, like if you have a couple of, of pieces of advice for folks who might be in that same intersection where they love all the things that you mentioned and they love the law and they're now realizing that there's a whole other option uh, sure. where you don't have to be a lawyer. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think in my particular case, I was really one, I had already been in compliance for some period of time. Right. So it was something that I started to understand and it was an area of, of, um, the pharmaceutical industry and, and that overlaps with the law, obviously, to some degree um, that I really liked. And so I that was I think that mystery was sort of solved for me a little bit. Um, and when I was looking at different programs, I did equally kind of look at JD programs and and different, you know, MSJ programs. Sometimes they were MSJ. Sometimes they were just like a master's in legal studies. Mm-hmm. And what I found across the board, and again, this was just true for me, was the JD program looked great, but it was so overarching. And I kind of already had a general idea of what I wanted that I wasn't hundred percent sure that that was going to be the right fit. I think I could do it, but I didn't know if it was going to, if it was going to sort of do exactly what I was hoping to achieve. And then on the flip side, sometimes I would see some of these like masters of legal studies um, programs and they were for the lack of a better term, like they didn't really have anything to do with anything. Like they had like, some <laughs> like topics that I think overlap but in general rule. Like I didn't really, see, okay. Like it seemed like it was absolutely fascinating. And that's not to say that there's not a place for that. And I know quite a absolutely. few individuals who, who got um, their degrees that way. And it was great. Um, it's just that where I was in that particular time, it just didn't make sense. I would have probably leaned more. If, if those were my two options, I would have leaned more towards a JD program. But Seton Hall, um, and specifically their law school, they actually attend quite a few um, pharma conferences. And I realized that Seton Hall wasn't the only one, but it was the one that had stuck out to me of the places that I looked online, because that first year you're taking intro to law and you take con law and you take torts and you take business law and, you know, you learn about contracts, which is interestingly enough, I review agreements today. Right. Um, And so those were the sort of that first year. And then you sort of spider into your concentration, depending on what it was. And I had a dual concentration. So there was, you know, the law of patient health and healthcare. It was absolutely fascinating and probably one of my favorite classes. HIPAA, of course, absolutely right. appropriate, something that you need to take. Um, and several others. There was a lot of like um, courses around like sponsorships and um, clinical trial sponsorships and things of that nature. Cool. So it was really great. Um, so I just think that depending on like what speaks to you and where you are in your mm-hmm. life, um, you know, the master's ended up probably being one of the most um, applicable and timely things that I've ever done. You know, I'm at, in my office doing sunshine reporting and getting preparing for, you know, CMS federal spend sunshine reporting. And I'm also in a transparency <laughs> law course. So yeah. like it, it very much covers really the practical um, training. Very <laughs> practical. Yeah. And so I, and I really enjoy it. And I do think that having a law degree, although not a JD, um, closed a lot of very necessary gaps for me. Um, not that it needs for everybody else, but for me, I found that very helpful. I knew that like my education wasn't over and I knew I was still playing that game in my head with whom would I like to switch places. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I wanted to do something that I thought was going to be um, applicable uh, and make me that much better equipped um, to be able to do my job. And and I think that the MSJ program did that. 
That's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. That is yeah. such helpful background, especially when you differentiate kind of your different options. And also within the S- S- uh, MSJ programs, um, you you know, they're not all the same. So I think it's a good reminder of that. So yeah. just one last question uh, before we let you go. Um, so if you could switch places <laughs> yeah. with your younger self, um, mm-hmm. when you're starting off in your career, or maybe even when you were at that junction of trying to decide what was next, um, whether it was school or something else, um, what would you tell yourself? What would you, what do you think would be the best piece of advice for a younger you? Um, probably, you know, I, I, again, I, it's a fun phrase, but it, it's, I think it's really true. Don't let you know, perfect be the enemy of good. You know, when you're going through school, whether you're, or you're just trying to figure it out, like sometimes in a lot of instances, the details matter, right? I'm very, I'm naturally very detail oriented. And so uh, there's a lot of the details are always something that come up in compliance, but when you're going through school, when you're trying to figure out what you want to do next, you know, that's not those, those, I think that's like the smaller minutia. Like I was like obsessed with like blue book citations and making sure that they were done properly. Like, okay, maybe that's okay. But in the grand scheme of things, like it's really yeah. not what's, what matters. Like, did you, do you know, do you feel that you had a good, you know, understanding of what you've covered? Um, do you, you know, do you get it? Do you not get it? You know, and also like just being okay to ask for help. And, um, and, you know, if you don't understand something, find out somebody, you know, find, seek out someone who does, because I do think that that is, um, really, really important. And I will preface that if my family hears me answer this question, they'll be like, that's tremendous advice. Where was this X number of years ago? And I'd be like, yes, <laughs> you know, and, Hindsight. We'll give you a pass. Exactly. That's but right. you're Hindsight. sharing with your you're sharing with your former self. Yes, so you know, exactly. Now you're on the yeah. other side. <laughs> yeah. I th- yeah. Absolutely. But I I think all of those things are true. Like truly, per- we're not striking. We're not seeking perfection. We're seeking for you know expanding our knowledge base and um doing doing the best we can with what we have. Because I think at any time we can look back on something that we've done or didn't do and say, oh, you know, if only it had been X, Y, or Z. Um, and I just don't think that, I think life's too short and I just don't think that's important. Um, but what is important is, you know, sort of keeping, you know, maintaining your momentum depending on what you want to get done. Um, and also learning from all the people around you, whether it's exactly what you want to do, or maybe they did something and you're like, all right, note to self, maybe that's not something I want to emulate. <laughs> there's, there's knowledge in all of it. Um, and, and I, and, and so I just think that like find mentors, keep those people, you know, in your life and, um, yeah, you never know how it unfolds. And I'm very grateful and very, very lucky yeah. that it, it, it unfolded the way that it did for me. But yeah. And we are too, because we get to share your story now. With yeah. Kind of <laughs> <Not a> weird. <laughs> Thank you yeah. so much for your time. You. Um, if folks are interested in learning more about the work that you're doing, is LinkedIn the best place to connect Absolutely. with you? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much again. It was so great to share your story and we look forward to keeping up with your journey and what, you know, the next thing that you do. (laughs) I would love that. Thank you so much. All right. Have a great day. Thank you. You too.